the story of a pool and the animals that cannot live without it. It's a place where hippos and crocodiles survive in mysterious harmony. A crowded pool where predator and prey are drawn together and where strange things happen that have rarely been seen before. At this pool, thirst can be dangerous, and drinking becomes a deadly game of chance. When the pool shrinks in an unrelenting drought, there is a desperate fight for life. A wild anarchy takes over, but only the fittest can survive. strange communion, hippos attend the last feast of the crocodiles. A river in Africa. It's known as the Levuvu, or Hippo River. And where land and river meet, there exists a rich concentration of animals. sustained life in the northern reaches of South Africa's Kruger National Park. When good rains have fallen, there is abundant water for all. But this year, little rain fell. The river dwindled to a narrow channel and finally stopped flowing. The pools that remain in the riverbed are life-sustaining oases. And this, which is one of the largest and deepest and has never been known to go dry, is a favorite refuge for hippos and crocodiles. For those who have to drink here each day, the challenge is to drink and survive. With over 60 crocodiles congregated here, caution becomes the first rule. Wise in the ways of the pool, oxpeckers, on their floating islands, drink safely. And these unpredictable giants don't seem to mind the few extra ounces of their company. But more extraordinary is this young crocodile, the smallest in the pool, who's become a regular passenger, and is possibly safer basking on the surprisingly tolerant hippos than with its own kind. Wily baboons have another strategy. They dig pits at the pool's edge and drink the seepage water rather than risk a croc attack. 
In contrast, this female impala is so stressed by thirst she's beyond caution. Dazed and distracted, she finally drinks in the worst possible place. Crocs aren't the only problem here. These impala have run afoul of a white-crowned plover, whose eggs are in a depression in the sand. These birds only nest near water, and so when the river dries, the fringe of the pool becomes prime real estate. But it's also a busy and dangerous thoroughfare. Crocs come here regularly to bask, Crocodiles lumbering up the bank are a major hazard for the fragile eggs. But unlike the timid impala, the crocs ignore the bird's warning cries. Lucky this time, and she settles down again to brood. Hippos spend their nights grazing, often far from the pool, and by day they too like to lie in the warm sun. A large, wet snout, applied with surprising gentleness, seems all that's needed to clear some space on the crowded beach. There's no hurry. We're all relaxed and easy here, and the great reptiles gradually respond to gentle nudges until all are accommodated to their liking. Another close call for the plovers, as the crocodile returns to the pool. But it's all just part of the price for a good waterfront site. Hippos are a nuisance for the plovers. They don't leave much space between them. that usually revive the river are late this year, and the water level in the pool drops rapidly. Fishing birds move in and find good pickings among the fish trapped in the shallows. The yellow-billed stork's juggling act is no game, but a way to tire the fish into relaxing its sharp, erected spines. Crocs eat fish, too. They're also cunning thieves, who deliberately harass the birds into dropping their fish. The herons must wet their catch before they can swallow it, and the crocs watch closely, waiting to move in and panic the bird at just the right moment. Sometimes these water birds appear to live a charmed life and to be mysteriously immune from attack by crocodiles. But bird and reptile understand each other well. 
and the crocs seem to know these birds are just too alert to be easily caught. But not all birds are crocodile smart. Green pigeons don't often drink. Usually they get enough moisture from the fruits they eat. But in the heat of this dry year, the birds are forced to come to water. And they're innocent of any danger. Spinning in a feeding frenzy is enough to frighten most animals away. But as the crocs tear apart an Inyala bull, something amazing happens. A hippo moves in and begins to mouth and lick the bodies of the feeding crocs. Hippos are strictly vegetarian. She hasn't come for a share of the spoils. Why she intrudes in this way is a mystery. She is more powerful than the crocs, and her dominance over them is absolute. She prods and licks the face of the biggest croc in the pool, even as it struggles to swallow the skull of the antelope. And then, as if her curiosity has been satisfied, she loses interest and leaves the crocs to their feast. Elephants don't have to worry about crocodiles when they drink, but they still prefer the cleaner water in the pits and vigorously dig them out. In the river bank near the pool, a large colony of nesting bee-eaters are feeding their young. They must forage continually in the hot sun to satisfy their needs. To cool off, every afternoon they fly over the pool and dive for their drinks. For some of the crocs, this is the signal to take up positions. are heavily in favor of the bee eaters and most survive the croc strikes. A thirsty lioness comes to water. She tries a pit but finds it full of bees. <laughs> <laughs> 